Hi, and welcome to Animal Zone. I'm Arthur von Wiesenberger, and this handsome fellow is Mikey, my adopted pit bull. Animal Zone is the A to Z on everything about adoptable pets. Whether you're looking for a bird, a cat, a dog, or even a tortoise, we've got experts who can share their knowledge and insights. So cuddle up with your favorite critter and join us as we explore the Animal Zone. Today on Animal Zone, we visit the groundbreaking organization, the Santa Maria Valley Humane Society, where adoptable cats and dogs flourish in the most inviting environment. Then we'll join Cece Bodette Wellman at her horse sanctuary in the San Inez Valley called Happy Endings. And finally, the pet psychic will tune into my adopted cat, Electra. So join us as we explore the Animal Zone. Oh, who's this old guy? Oh, that's Cooper. He's seen a few of these. Most people like to adopt the younger dogs, but one day your time will come, huh, Cooper? Aww. Sweetheart, what about those puppies? Aww. Honey puppies. <laughs> Mommy, Daddy, that's it, that's the one. The Coldwell Banker Homes for Dogs Project has helped find homes for thousands of shelter dogs. How's your tea? Because our agents don't just understand real estate, they understand what home is all about. Thank you for joining us. Let's head back into the Animal Zone. Today we're at the Santa Maria Valley Humane Society with their executive director, Sean Hawkins. And Sean, thank you for having us here today. We're out in the middle of the strawberry fields. You would never guess it by looking at this magnificent building. But you used to be just down the, down the field a bit, didn't you? It's really a fascinating story. So Santa Maria Valley Humane Society is actually 35 years old. And for 30 years, we were directly across the strawberry patch next to the city of Santa Maria wastewater treatment facility in a tiny little cinder block building. And it was a group of very dedicated volunteers who pulled stray dogs and cats off the street, often kept them in their homes. Uh, they raised money through uh, bake sales and, and garage sales. They had a hot dog stand on Main Street. They decided they wanted to do better for animals in the community. And so this group of volunteers got together and, and raised almost $5 million to build a brand new animal shelter. That's a lot of big sales. To care for <laughs> animals, and they raised every dollar of it um, to care for animals on the Central Coast. So we're really proud of it. I it's can't a wait magnificent to, building. Can't wait to show you the work we're doing. Can you take us on a little tour? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> So, Sean, this is the cat house. It's our cat village. Oh, the village. It's our cat village. And it takes a village to raise some kitties. How many cats have you got? We typically have about 40 to 50 cats in residence at any time. There's usually about 100 animals in residence mm -hmm. um, at any time in the entire animal shelter, mm. but about 40 cats for adoption. Wow. And I see you have certain rooms where you can go in and uh, bond with the kitty? Well, so you said that it takes a village to um, run an animal shelter, and here at the Santa Maria Valley Humane Society, we have a program called Open Paw, and Open Paw is manners and skills training for shelter pets. <laughs> so wow. every visitor to the animal shelter is actually part of our training program. So when you come to visit animals at the shelter, we actually give you an instruction card, mm -hmm. and we give you toys to interact with all of the cats, oh. and we ask you to visit each of the cat rooms with treats, and um, we get you to socialize with our pets. You're part of the training team when you come here. So does that make the cats more familiar with other people? people is it our happens? goal right our goal with open paw is to desensitize dogs and cats to unfamiliar people so in child welfare you hear us talk about stranger danger right you tell your kids to stay away from people they don't know well, in the animal shelter, all of these dogs and cats are going to go home with somebody that they don't know. So the more work we can do to desensitize them to unfamiliar people, the friendlier they're going to be, the more they interact with you, and the quicker they're going to get adopted. Wow. So you've really brought in some psychology into the adoption process. It is absolutely rooted in behavioral psychology for dogs and cats. I also notice you have high-value treats. Let's go show that. Okay. So you were saying that uh, kittens need to meet a lot of people. So our goal is to have 
Dogs and cats in the animal shelter meet 20 people every single day, five of which must be unfamiliar people. So given that statistic, you can see how a small shelter staff is not able to accomplish all the socialization. So that's why we rely on the public coming through the shelter to be part of our behavior team. It's interesting that um, the, the work that we do with Open Paw was developed by Dr. Dean, Ian Dunbar, who's a veterinary behaviorist. And he has determined that for dogs and cats to be um, healthy and well-adjusted socially, that they should meet 100 people before they're three months of age. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of people. Well, here's a nice little cat room. Maybe uh, we can have a little one-on-one -on -one with, with a kitty. Absolutely. So remember we talked about um, visitors coming to the shelter and, and meeting all of our dogs and cats throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So when you come to visit our cats, we ask you to take a small handful of high-value treats, oh, okay. and then we're going to go into one of our free room rooms and interact with the cats. And these cats are going to come up to you because they know you've got cool stuff in your hand. Okay. Well, I'm armed and dangerous. Here we go. <laughs> Hi, kitties. Oh, little kitties. If we can wake them up. They've had a pretty busy day already. Already, huh? Okay. Wow. Hi. Oh, my yeah. goodness. We have a little treat for you. This is Molly. <gasps> Molly. Oh, my goodness. And you know what? She, she actually looks like she may be a little high on catnip. I see some catnip scattered around <laughs> on her. I think she's just kind of chilling out here uh -huh. with a vibe. But you can see some other families have been in treating her today. I see. Hey, Molly. Oh, there oh. we go. Oh, there we go. There's no, like a little, a little petting, little petting on, the, on the catnip. Um, and, and cats, of course, perform on cue, right? Of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what did someone say that cats were, uh, in the ancient Egyptian uh, culture, they were revered, referred to as gods, and they've never forgotten that since. <laughs> they, they, they allow us to visit with them. That is correct. <laughs> that is absolutely correct. But you can see, um, you know, in a lot of animal shelters, um, it, it's a pretty stressful environment for cats. Mm -hmm. um, in our animal shelter, you can see the cats are lounging about on their luxurious beds. They've got interesting hiding spaces. Um, and what we really try and do is get people to interact with the cats so that they're social and, and they're not afraid. I mean, these guys are not frightened of us. No. Um, they're not cowering. Um, and and um, if we weren't the second wave of visitors, they'd be coming up to you to take treats out of your hand. So you can, you can just sort of settle in on a nice little bench like this and, and usually they'll say, come over hi. and say, hey, hi, what's going on, guys? There we go. Now you also, of course, have dogs, right? We have plenty of dogs. Well, maybe we can go say hi to Bowser. Let's go take a look. Take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today and don't worry if someone beats you to the shelter there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. The Santa Barbara Humane Society offers low-cost spay and neuter and vaccinations to cats and dogs in our community. And Dr. Sisk is our veterinarian who performs those surgeries and helps with the vaccinations. Also, please have a relationship with your local veterinarian in case of an emergency. Visit sbhumanesociety.org and remember... At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not shop. Sometimes scary things happen, like fires and floods, and suddenly a family has lost everything. That's why the Unity Shop has a disaster assistance program. We help families with immediate needs like food, clothing, and household items, and we continue to help them long term until they're back on their feet and in their homes. But it takes a whole community to make this possible. Please, donate today so we can help everyone who needs us. Find out how you can help at unityshop.org. So you say the uh, adoptions have gone up since you've been here. So we've implemented a program here called Open Paw, which is manners and skills training for shelter pets. When I arrived here 18 months ago, we were adopting about 30 dogs and cats into new homes. Now we consistently adopt 130 dogs and cats into new homes every month. 
and largely that's because when these animals go home, they're prepared to go into a new home. We've given them basic skills that allow them to adapt into a new family. So you don't have a lot of returns? No, um, actually our returns, um, 18 months ago, we had a 22% return rate on adult dogs and cats. Our return rate now is down to 4%. And let me show you, see largely, that's because these guys um, are, are ready to go into a new home. So with the cats, I showed you how we um, had high value treats and the teaser toys and we go in and we interact with the cats. Right. With the dogs, we ask visitors who come to the shelter to actually be part of the training team by feeding the dogs when they go through. So all of our dog kennels have buckets of food on the front. When you come through, we just ask you to toss a handful of kibble under. and. What we're doing with dogs like Hershey is we're teaching them that unfamiliar people coming through the shelter are good. They come to the front of, of the kennel. They're not frightened. Um, very calm. You, you notice we're standing in the middle of a full kennel building and we're having a conversation. That's true. Because the dogs aren't stressed. They know that people are cool and they know that good stuff's going to happen when people walk through the kennel. Wow, it's fantastic. And then you have a place outside where you can uh, play and have fun. We do. With the dogs. So in, a, in addition to the hand feeding, um, oh my goodness, what a good dog. How about that? How about that? So everybody coming through the shelter is part of the training team by feeding, helping to feed the dogs. Um, and in addition to the hand feeding, we also have a really robust um, behavior boot camp. So this is our, um, our uh, open paw behavior board for dogs. And you'll see every dog in the kennel is listed. Um, we have them on a really rigorous schedule, so the dogs get leash walked three times a day, 7 a.m., 1 o'clock, and 6 p.m. That schedule never deviates, so we're getting dogs used to a schedule, which is how you house train a dog. We're getting them used to being on a leash, which is a great skill for a new home. In addition to the three leash walks a day, our animal behavior specialist has a specific behavior plan in place for every dog. So if a dog is pulling on a leash, then we're going to have a plan in place how to work on leash pulling. Um, if the dog is, is already has basic manners and skills, then we're just going to play fetch and make sure that that dog is really um, interested in, in inter interacting with people and, and going to be a good part of your family when you get home. Wow, it's so well organized. And you even know whether they've done one, two, or everything. Pee poo or both. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that's great. Well, this is a good model to take home when you have the dog at home because you make sure you keep them on the same schedule, right? Well, so. Um, when people adopt from a shelter, they typically want a ready-to-go dog or cat. People don't want to you know, get a new pet home and then realize that the dog doesn't know how to walk on a leash or the cat you know, shreds your new drapes. So we take very seriously our job of getting an animal ready to be a new family member. So every interaction here in the shelter is building on those skills to get animals acclimated to being in a new home. So because of that, our return rates have just plummeted. Um, as, as I mentioned, we had a 22% return rate on adult dogs adopted from the shelter 18 months ago. Now our return rate is right at 4%, which is a huge improvement, but it also means um, we weren't putting bad animals into the community. We were just putting animals into the community that weren't ready to go into a new home. Mm -hmm. So all of this open paw work, all of this behavior science helps these dogs and cats um, get ready to go into a new home. And you have a full-time behaviorist that works here. Right? We have a full-time animal behaviorist and we have two um, kennel coaches or dog trainers that are on staff in addition to the animal care team. And do they work at all with the adopt uh, the families that are coming to adopt to give them some tips? Absolutely. So when you when you arrive at the shelter, we try and make the best match. Um, you may navigate towards you know the high energy, um, you know Labrador, and you may be more of a couch potato in your lifestyle. So we want to make sure that, that you know that we interview you correctly and that we listen to what kind of lifestyle you have. What kind? Do you have a fenced yard? Um, you know, do you run three miles a day? Um, and then we're going to steer you to the pet that's going to be a, a best match for you. That's brilliant. All right. Well, let's go play with the dog. Let's go check out the garden. Yeah. So we're out in the play yard here, which is pretty nice. And uh, you've got a resident here named Ronan? This is Ronan. Um, Daniel, will Ronan come over with you? Daniel is one of our awesome kennel coaches here. And we're going to get Ronan. Ronan. Come say hi. Boy. Come over here. Come say hi. There we go. Oh hey, my Ronan. Hi. Hey. hey there. Hello, Ronan. What's your name? So, you um, Tell me about Ronan. Ronan is one of the dogs from the Woolsey Fire. So um, during the fire evacuations, we brought 
uh, 14 adult dogs from Ventura Animal Services. Um, those dogs were already on the adoption floor and in their animal shelter before the fire started. Mm -hmm. We transferred adoptable dogs here so that they had room for the emergency evacuations. So Ronan is one of the guys that came from Ventura as a result of the fire and he's one of four dogs left that we're still trying to get homes for. Any idea because, how old he is? Um, he is seven years old. Oh, he looks great. And he's a pretty darn sweet Rottweiler. Um, he was uh, significantly underweight. Uh, we've actually put quite a bit of um, weight back on him just in, in the, the week or so, two weeks that he's been here. Mm -hmm. And he's available for adoption now? He's available for adoption and, and ready to make somebody a, a, a perfect family member. Oh, he's beautiful. He really is. Ronan. I wish I could take it with me now. <laughs> but you can see how um, you know, the work that we do um, you know, makes these dogs uh, super social, um, you know, not afraid of people. Um, you know, these guys know that um, you know, Daniel or any visitor to the shelter is going to have treats in their pocket. He's, he's looking for a treat right there. Um, and uh, you know, part of our open paw work is to teach manners and skills so that um, animals interact with people. Um, you know, their, their best selling point is, is doing exactly this, right? Um, yeah. we, we want them to, to love on you and, and, and interact with you so that um, they that's can what, get a home. That's what you want to take home. Right. right. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. yeah, he looks like he's a perfect addition to any home. He'd make somebody just a perfect family member. And if people want to know more about Ronan, can they find it out on your website? So all of our available dogs and cats, um, you can see on our website, which is smvhs.org, and click on the Adopt Me button, and you'll see the profile of every pet in the shelter. I'm ready to adopt you right now. Hey, this has been so great, and I hope we'll be back soon to see some more of the Santa Maria Valley Animal Shelter. Thank you so much for uh, taking us on this tour today, Sean. You are great. welcome, and you can you can tell we've we've really upset Ronan <laughs> by your visit here today. <laughs> Thanks. We'll be right back after these words. The Santa Barbara County Animal Care Foundation is dedicated to saving animals' lives, but we need your help to continue this critical work. SBCACF provides year-round medical and surgical care so that abandoned, homeless, or abused animals receive the best second chance at finding a loving home. No animal is turned away from surgical care. To learn more and assist us in keeping that pledge, visit sbcanimalcare.org and make a donation today. If they can be saved, we want to save them. Today we're at Happy Endings Animal Sanctuary in Solvang, California with the founder and old friend of mine, Cece Bodet Wellman. Hey Cece, so good to be here today. Well, thank you so much for coming. This and we've got awesome. two beautiful friends between us. Who are these guys? Uh, this is Miss Jiggy. Uh, she is the head of our education program with the children. She teaches uh, children and adults how to love horses, uh, not to be afraid of them, uh, she teaches them how to trust uh, and love and give uh, complete friendship to. She's wonderful. How old is she? She is 27 years old. You look beautiful for your age, my goodness. And next to you? This is Tucker Lark. He, uh, he is uh, our second in line for the education program. He loves children, he loves people. Uh, he is 29 years old. Uh, his owner had to go into assisted living, and so he came here for his retirement, and so he gets to work. He used to be a champion trail horse, uh, and now he's just uh, our resident teddy bear. Tell me, how did Happy Endings start? Well, I did wildlife rehabilitation for over 30 years, and uh, when I turned 50, my husband said, you know, you need to start making your dreams come true before you get too old to do it. And so I'd always wanted a sanctuary. And I had had horses my whole life. And so we decided to uh, start a sanctuary where everybody could be safe and loved and find their forever happy ending. So it was happy ending because you were aiming more towards senior horses? Well, happy endings is a very common animal term to where you get something that needs help or that's sick or uh, in trouble and you fix it. 
and you turn it around and you make it happy and healthy and loving. Wow, that's great. And how many horses have you got now? Um, I have 10 on site here. Uh, eight of them are uh, sanctuary horses and two are my own. Uh, because we have five acres, we have a limit of 10. And then I have some others and built in at a friend of mine's uh, ranch. And do you have horses available for adoption? Yes, I do. Uh, I have uh, one, two, three, four horses right here for adoption. Wow. And how would they find out or how could they get more information about adopting? Well, our website, uh, they're listed on our website. Uh, they are on all sorts of pet finders and different uh, animal adoption websites. So if someone maybe not doesn't have a horse but has the land for it and the corrals, it's a commitment, isn't it, to have a horse? It is a commitment uh, and it's especially a financial commitment. Uh, horses are very expensive. Now, do you ride these horses at all? Actually, uh, I ride him sometimes. Uh, he's my uh, wonderful, fun, loving, uh, tie my reins in a knot and look at the birds in the sky. Mm -hmm. um, I have my two horses over there and I ride my little mare um, sometimes. And, um, but I don't really have enough time lately. Right. So. Right. And you're outreaching to people to help help them come to learn more about horses, right? Yes. You know, everybody, uh, animals in general, you know, well, you know, they don't have feelings or it's just a dog or it's just a horse. Um, and it's not true. Animals have the same basic core emotions that people do. Mm -hmm. uh, they just don't have the specific um, individualized emotions so they feel fear and happiness and security and love and um, abandonment uh, all sorts of you know basic pretty basic emotions do you talk to your horses I taught yes <laughs> everybody's like oh, there she goes again uh -huh. <laughs> but um, it's funny because I didn't I never realized uh, when I after when I got Tucker that uh, I found a copy of his papers, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, his great grandfather was our stallion growing up. Wow. So I looked at him and I said, Tucker, you're my family. Huh. And That's amazing. What are the chances? He just changed. Uh -huh. His whole demeanor toward me changed. He was always sort of like, yeah, whatever, you know. And now every time when the week he comes out during the day, um, we have to play Huggy Bear Kissy Face before he goes out, and then he's fine, then he goes out. So, um, he's, he's very special. They're all very special. Horses are an amazing addition to one's life, aren't they? They are. As all, all animals they are. They are, But there's yeah. a certain connection with horses that people we have. We have a program called Horse Angels. And what's that? And we have uh, underserved uh, youth who come here uh, with the uh, intention of helping the horses. And so we uh, tell the horse's story, we humanize it, and the children are amazed because they have similar life stories. So they're like, wow, I never, under you know, I never thought that the horse could think like that. And all of a sudden, instead of being, you know, yeah, teach me something, they're like, oh wow, this is so great, and I'm gonna love on this horse, and we want to make it our Facebook horse, you know. <laughs> and so uh, they want to come back. They've come back and and uh, volunteered. Uh, they've done fundraising for us. One girl uh, did two separate fundraisers, raised over three thousand dollars for us. Wow. Sounds great. It sounds like a perfect happy ending. Well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we've got more Animal Zone right here. Stay tuned. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry, if someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home.
Imagine, if you will, a zone. A zone where animals can talk to humans. Submitted for your amazement, the pet psychic, as we enter the animal zone. Well, here we are with Electra, a sweet little kitten that we recently brought home and uh, with Wendy and of course Laura Stinchfield who is the pet psychic. Electra was a cat or kitten that was dropped off with her siblings at a barn I have up in the Sequoias and uh, she was so friendly and so sweet. She'd come up and cuddle with me and I thought, well, you know what, I can't leave her in the barn to become a feral kitty. She had to come home, didn't you? Aww. So she's here and she's just about a half, half a year old. She's six months old. Oh, wow. And so uh, she's put Hi, on some weight Electra. since she got here. So we'll see what Electra has to say. I'm gonna tell her that I can hear her. Hi, Electra. When people see animals, do they all want to hold you? Well, you're super adorable, so I would bet a lot of people would want to hold you, but not everybody. Sometimes you like to run after things that are rolling. <laughs> Boy, does true. she like to do that. Yeah. You try to jump from one thing to the other. Sometimes you miss. Well, you're learning yet. What does it mean when they say no? Uh, it means to stop doing whatever you're doing. Sometimes they say no, no, no. <laughs> Well, do you remember what you were doing when they were saying that? Sometimes you're climbing. Yes, mm -hmm. she is, up the draperies. Up the draperies. Oh, you're not allowed to go up the draperies because you'll ruin them, honey. You'll ruin them. Sometimes they say to you, you're so cute. Well, you are so cute. That is very true. You understand when they say food time? <laughs> yeah, she does. <laughs> She definitely understand what you're saying. So maybe when you're talking to her and like, let's say you say no, no, no. Um, think about no, then leaving her hanging and then telling her what you want her to do afterwards. Okay. You know, so like meaning no means stop that and then like leave it or off. Right, like and the then, dog, like we do. Yeah, yeah right, yeah. exactly. And then visualize what you want her to do. Okay. Is that the best way to communicate? Yeah, that's the best way to communicate with them. So if you want, like, let's say you want to tell her to like not climb the curtains, you want to try and stay away from saying things like don't climb the curtains because what happens is you create a visual in your mind of her climbing the curtains and a feeling of her climbing the curtains. So then she'll think I should climb the curtains. So you tell her off all fours on the ground. Or you could say, when you climb the curtains, we get very upset because you could rip the curtains or the curtains could fall down and you could get hurt. So we like it if you'd play on the ground. Well, Laura, thank you so much oh, for you're those welcome. insights uh, into Electra, And we uh, appreciate you sharing it with our viewers here on Animal Zone. We'll be right back. Every morning, you could count on it being there with the rise of the sun. We're proud to say we've been there every day with you. The Santa Barbara News Press plans to continue sharing the news of the day with you all through the year and beyond. It's nice to know there are some things you can still count on. The Santa Barbara News Press, serving Santa Barbara since 1855. Subscribe today. Call 1-800-654-3292. Weren't there some amazing animals and guests? You know, you who adopt animals from shelters, you are the true heroes. If you want to see more about Animal Zone and other things, check out our website, animalzone.org. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Never was a friend so true. Never was a friend like you. Canine, you're my best friend. Canine of mine. Time. So glad you're my best friend Through thick and thin We'll see things through Canine of mine, so true Did I find you or did you find me? Either way it's still serendipity when I saw you, it was plain to see You weren't just another lassie Wanna be your canine of mine Friend for all time 
I'm so glad you're my best friend.